What does it say about the economy when not even discount stores can afford to keep the lights on? Family Dollar and Dollar Tree announced that they're planning to close a thousand stores across the US. Dollar Tree, which owns Family Dollar, reported a loss of $1.7 billion on its latest earnings report for the fourth quarter of 2023, which was down sharply from earnings of 452 million only a year prior. In response, Dollar Tree, the parent company of Family Dollar, will be closing a thousand Family Dollar stores, 600 of which will be in early 2024 and another 300 over the coming years. On a call with analysts, Dollar Tree CEO stated, the reasoning for this is persistent inflation and reduced government benefits continue to pressure the lower income consumers that comprise a sizable portion of Family Dollar's customer base. And this isn't just a Family Dollar issue. As Dollar General, another discount store also gave weak outlook during its most recent earnings report as well. During a post earnings call, the CEO stated, customers are continuing to feel the impact of the last two years of inflation, which we believe is driving them to make trade-offs in the store. One would think that if a soft landing was on the table and no recession was on the horizon for the economy, that discount retailers would not be short on their earnings reports. In fact, they of all stores should be thriving. And this to me is just an indicator that consumers are struggling and it's not only reflective in discount retailers' earnings, but also reflective in credit card delinquencies. According to this article, credit card delinquencies surged more than 50% in 2023 as total consumer debt swelled to $17.5 trillion. And that's data straight from the New York Federal Reserve. It's absolutely crazy to think that delinquencies jumped 50% in 2023. And to top off the fact that everyday household items are much more expensive than they used to be and are putting financial burden on the consumer, causing them to tap into their credit, the interest on those credit cards has risen drastically, making it all the more difficult to pay off. Since the Federal Reserve has increased the Fed's funds rate, the typical credit card interest rate leaped from 14.5% to 21.5%. And it's not just credit card delinquencies on the rise. Virtually everything across the board, every type of debt has seen an increase in 30, 90 day past due delinquencies. And there is evidence of this affecting the housing market as well. Lennar, one of the United States' largest home builders, recently gave its first quarter earnings. And during that earnings call, the company's CEO noted, quote, we are definitely seeing a little bit more credit card debt and personal debt from the customer showing up in their applications. And we have seen some delinquencies on some of that debt. That means less qualified buyers, which means more supply, which means lower prices. And there are already concessions being made on these new construction homes. There's just not enough qualified buyers on the market. So as time goes on, these interest rate hikes by the Federal Reserve are going to weigh more heavily on the average consumer. And they're going to slow the economy down. And we're slowly but surely starting to see some of these cracks. And not to make it sound like being delinquent on loans other than credit cards isn't a problem, but the interest rates on these credit cards is so high that it's really deep to dig out of that hole. See, this is what the Fed wants. They raise the Fed funds rate, which means the rate at which businesses can borrow rises, then the businesses pass that on to you, then your credit card interest rates rise, which means your payments get higher, and then you basically can't afford to spend as much in the economy, which in turn slows the economy down and decreases inflation. Guys, a lot of people don't believe some of this stuff is happening in the economy. I get comments all the time, people thinking that it's just, you know, clickbait or doom and gloom, but this is all statistics. These are, these are all data points, mostly from the New York Fed or the St. Louis Fed, government agencies that are putting out these statistics. And you can't deny that people are struggling. You can just walk into a grocery store and you can look at the prices, or you can look at your budget and see how much it has dwindled away in the last couple years, and you can tell that people are struggling. It's a lot harder to get by now than it was before. So you gotta be paying attention to these things. 
and there's really not much you can do right now except for just try to stay out of credit card debt. That's probably the number one thing you can do right now in order to be prepared for this is just to stay out of credit card debt. There's a lot of people, according to these statistics, that are drowning in credit card debt. So if you need any advice, my advice is to start pounding away at that credit card debt. Quit putting money on those credit cards and you'll at least be a little bit ahead of the game. You'll still be paying these crazy prices like everyone else is, but at least you won't be drowning in 14 and a half, 21 and a half percent interest rates on these credit cards if you can't pay down that balance every single month. And while the American consumer is drowning in debt, private equity wants to own every single piece of it, every single piece of you and every single piece of me. In a report from the Wall Street Journal, private equity is buying up packages of loans for all of our debt. As banks are burdened with commercial real estate loans, they seem very willing to offload some of this debt to private equity to balance their books. Private fund managers such as Apollo, Blackstone, and KKR have grown dominant in corporate finance over the past decade. Now they are targeting the biggest prize in the global economy, the US consumer. It goes on to say that firms are pushing aggressively into asset-based finance, a kitchen sink of debt, including auto loans, credit cards, real estate mortgages, and loans backed by equipment such as fiber optic networks. Such financings touch almost every piece of the US economy, and tapping into that market could mean riches for the fund's executives and their shareholders. It goes on to say, rising interest rates hit banks with heavy losses starting in 2022, triggering failures last year at institutions such as Silicon Valley Bank, and a subsequent regulatory crackdown followed. An even larger proportion of lending will be concentrated among a small group of large, influential asset managers, Moody's rating said in a report this week. This will only fuel their influence on the economy, and the most interesting part about this article is this part right here. Private funds have increasingly joined up with insurance companies to boost their buying power. They're also using complex instruments to buy risk from big banks such as JP Morgan Chase, and banks are lending funds to help them boost returns. Does that sound a little bit familiar to you? See, the problem with these private equity firms is they're not regulated by the banks, but that doesn't mean that if something goes awry, they won't get a bailout. There's increasingly more regulations being put on these banks and private equity is coming in and swooping up all of these loans from them, packaging them up, and selling them to investors. From what it sounds like in this article, they're actually taking money from large funds and buying up some of these debt from these banks, but there is no regulation on these private equity firms like there is the banks. But I can guarantee you if something happens, the federal government would not hesitate to bail them out. You know, everybody's been wondering what exactly these banks are doing with all this debt that they have. Well, it sounds like this is the answer right here. They're packaging up this debt and selling it off to private equity. And now your debt and my debt and every American's debt is gonna be owned by Blackstone and Apollo and all these other private equity firms. All these fund managers are gonna be making money while we sit here and we suffer making these 21.5% interest payments on our credit cards while inflation is through the roof. So why else is private equity a problem? Well, if they're buying up all this debt, that means that they have all of this consumer information on you and me, and they have no regulation. So they're buying up all this debt from these banks, which is also consumer information. Who's gonna regulate that information? You know, what happens when China gets a hold of it or something like that? These private equity firms are not regulated at all and they're coming in and buying up all this debt. They're packaging these into complex instruments in order to sell them off. I mean, it sounds eerily similar to some of the stuff that was happening back in the great financial crisis when they were packaging up all those subprime loans and just selling them off. I mean, what do you think they're buying now? They're buying up all this credit card debt from the consumers and according to statistics, a lot of people aren't paying on those. Remember last year, there was a 50% jump in 30, 90 day delinquencies. So they're buying up all this risky debt, packaging it up and selling it off. So it sounds like just another catastrophe waiting to happen. 
and guess who's gonna get bailed out? They're gonna get bailed out. So it's just the same old story all over again. There's really not much we can do about this stuff except be aware of it or try to pay off that credit card as fast as possible. So pay attention to this stuff. I don't believe for a second that there's gonna be a soft landing and neither should you. And the only way for you to be prepared is to stay informed. So please smash that like button, click the subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next one.